Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It's Francesco here and I'm going to be touring you around Things3. Things3 is a personal to-do list application that you can use to organize your tasks for the day. And what I'm going to be doing is starting with a bit of information about the application, then diving into some of the features to help understand whether this is the most suitable to-do list application for you. Now, let's start with some of the information. Now, this application is available on Mac, iOS, which includes iPhone and iPad. If the Mac version is priced at $49.99 as a one-off from the Apple Store, you do get uh, a free trial. I believe it's a 14-day free trial, and you need to be running a Mac OS 10 or above. Now, you can download this as well on iPhone, the iPhone version comes with it an additional cost of $9.99. And also you have the iPad version, which is $19.99. So if you wanted all of these things three available on all of your devices, you're looking at about shy of $80, but this is not a recurring cost. So you will be just paying that outright once you have it on all of your devices. Now, as you can see here, I'm gonna be demonstrating this on Mac. Before we dive in, if you're brand new to Keep Productive YouTube channel, please do subscribe because we do regular features like this. And also, you can learn lots about different other applications. You might not find things very suitable for you. So you might find another application that we've reviewed and gone into detail on that might be better for you. Okay, so here we are on the Mac version and I've created it into this smaller window. I always do think it looks better. Um, as a small window. So let's start on this left-hand side panel. So you have a few sort of fixed states to get you started. And the first is traditionally with the to-do application, you get an inbox. The inbox is really easy to use. So you can do, uh, you can go ahead and create a task. We'll talk more about the task details in a second, but I can go ahead and add something like uh, activate um, MasterCard and add the task straight away. And that appears inside of the inbox and as you can see you get an a little number next to it to indicate how many you how many tasks you have inside of your inbox now you do have a today area today area is for anything that is uh, marked with a due date of today which is good you also have upcoming as well which i will show you how you can populate this with your calendar uh, events once you connect out your apple calendar so you can obviously scroll ahead and actually see months ahead, which is quite good. So for example, you can see September, October, November, December, January, and any repeated to-dos that you do have. Now you also have an area called Anytime. Now this is really just for all of your tasks to appear in more of a linear view. So you can see all of those. And once you complete, ones that you can actually complete and sort based on absolutely any factor that you like, it's just a generalized list. Just below it, you have something called Someday, which is technically part of GTD, Getting Things Done, a book by David Allen, which talks about basically allowing yourself someday tasks. So it could be anything in the long-term future, like going to Finland on holiday um, or exploring the local caves to um, you know actually getting something done that doesn't necessarily have a due date yet. And just below it, you have something called a logbook, which indicates the tasks that, you, tasks that you've completed, um, which is good because you can go and see all this in detail. Now, in uh, this actual feature, we'll show you another area which you get created called the trash, and uh, it is for all of your tasks to become uh, available to actually empty trash and recover as well. Down here, you've also got to create a new list you can create two different types of areas. You can create a project, which is defined based on a goal, uh, a certain specific time set, or an area, which is a set of responsibilities that you can add projects into. So it's quite neat in terms of being able to organize and coordinate. We'll actually showcase how to use that and dive into settings as well. So let's start at the inbox. We created that task up here. Now, a task is really easy to create. You get a check, check, checkable tick, uh, up here that you can tick off and it's really easy to access that. You can obviously add some notes about the task. Um, for example, adding a bit more detail about the task before you complete it. And you've got a few different indicators down here. So you can add when you'd like to complete the task. Now you can add it to your today area, which will automatically go into your today area 
and it's moved. So it's moved from inbox, it actually moves out of there. Let's go back into this. And also you can add it to another day if you want to. So for example, let's say you want to add it for Saturday. As you can see, it will disappear from the today area and go into upcoming. So you can see that in the upcoming list as that is for tomorrow or future days. So just go into that one again. You can also add it for this evening. So this is quite a neat feature. So for example, if you wanted to break out your tasks into today and this evening, they basically separate the list into two. So for example, if you have tasks that are specifically for you and your family to do in the evening, it could be you know clean their garden or um, you know reroute some plants, then you could do that this evening, or you could just have today for the times that you've got work um, and you need to associate it there. Now inside of there, you can also add it to the someday uh, maybe list. I call it someday maybe list, the someday area, which will automatically add it to this project or uh, pinned project over here. And you can also add a reminder at a specific time. So for example, you want to add a, um, you know, this evening at 1900 hours and you can press done and then you'll get a reminder through the um, Mac system to do that task. So that's brilliant. I've added a task there um, and the reminder doesn't actually appear when you go out of this view. So it looks quite sort of very minimalist uh, in its structure. You can go ahead and add some uh, tags. I've already added a few, but for example, maybe this one's to do at home. So you can select home as your tag. Um, and as you can see, it appears on the outside. Now you may see there that a new area appears and that's all tasks and home related tasks. So you can add these are almost tag filters that just hide away. For example, if I got rid of this one, you can see that disappears. So it's very um, succinct in terms of allowing you to add and organize, but in a very minimal, minimal way so that it hides away when you don't need it. So you've also got a checklist here. So for example, if I wanted to be, okay, um, you know, sign into Visa account, so if you wanted to break this down into a checklist, you can easily do that. And for example, if you had a checklist items or more, you can move them up and down the list as well. Now there is a final uh, different thing you can add to a task, a different element or property, and that's deadline. So for example, you could have a max out deadline. Let's say the card is gonna be deactivated on the 30th. You have 31 days to complete that task, and this appears on the right hand side here. So although you're doing this this evening, you do know that the task has a very important date that you need to hit um, for it to be completed. So the good thing is if I wanted to bring it into the today area, I could, but if I wanted to bring it back into this evening, I'd have to go into the when area and press this evening. So if I click done, it will pop back into that area. Now, something to note there, there are a ton of shortcuts that you can access um, and you can learn the keyboard shortcuts like pressing Command S will actually just set up when you want it and you can move it into different areas. If you did want to move it into a certain area, you can just drag it, which is really easy to do so. And uh, you can use those that right hand click to be able to sort stuff for later. Now, one of the things there as well is you can go ahead and duplicate it. You can use just copy and paste, so Command C, Command V to paste it and use a delete to actually delete a task. Now that's a good indicator because the trash box has appeared and this is a good example. You can go ahead and empty your trash um, and you can even recover one so you can put it back in today very, very easily. Now, for example, let's say I have a routine task for today that's put out the gray bins. Maybe I need to do this every single day so all you have to do is press the right hand and actually press repeat. And you can select, for example, repeat after completion every week, every month, every day, every year, and you can add certain reminders and certain deadlines. So for example, let's say I want to go ahead and set this as a weekly thing. I can go and do that. And once I press this ticked off, what I should see is if I go in my upcoming area, I should see this appear next Friday that this task is a recurring task, which is really handy and will help me to keep organized for later. So that's how you go ahead and create a few of those. So let's go ahead and create a new to-do. I'm actually gonna be um, planning Notion course. So that's one of my tasks for today. So that's gonna be added to this area. 
So the great news is obviously you can go ahead and start planning your next couple of days. Um, and obviously you might want to be able to actually see some of the calendar events you have. So let's go into the preferences area. And if you select calendar events, you go to show calendar events in today and upcoming list. And as you can see, you can select the calendars that you do have access to. So if I go up here, I can go to the today area and this appears. So I've basically got all of my Google, sorry, all of my Apple calendar events at succinct, which is really easy to do. So for example, I've got like all of my gym, got my cooking, eat lunch. So I've all got all of my recurring events and then for example, head to bed. And I can see any upcoming events too that are specifically for certain occasions, which is really easy to see. And it makes it really perfect when you're going about planning. Because for example, the one thing you can do is if, for example, you had the today area and you wanted to plan today and in the next couple of weeks, you can press this new uh, window area, drag these over, make maybe it a little bit smaller, select upcoming, and you can begin planning. And you can even drag stuff over. So for example, if I wanted to say, okay, Monday, I'm going to start planning that Notion course, I can start organizing that out. So that's one of the benefits, and a lot of people actually really like that feature. You can access all of the other pages um, that you have inside of your Things3 account. Okay, so that's a very simple sort of overview of the today and the upcoming area. The upcoming area is very powerful for accessing all of the useful things you've got coming up. And the good thing is here, you can actually see all of the great uh, events in more detail, and it helps you plan especially for the, the bigger events in the future. And uh, as you can see down here, the anytime appears as all of the tasks that you've done so far. So let's show you how the projects and the areas work. So for example, if I wanted to set up a project, uh, maybe I want to um, sow seeds in the garden. So I can go ahead and, and title the project and in this left-hand panel, you can see that appear. So there are a few different uh, sort of options for each project I can set. I can choose to complete the project and I'll show you how that works in a moment. You can set a when time. So for example, this could be near the end of the month, but this gives me a later project. So you can see that uh, I've got something that is coming up. So you can actually set a specific day for the project to start, which is quite nice. If I didn't, if I wanted the project to be sort of active, I could just remove that and it would appear as something there. So that's handy if you've got any projects that are coming up. I can add a deadline as well. So for example, if I'm like, okay, I need to get this done by the end of October, then you can see here that the deadline appears and you've got 62 days left. So if I go up here as well, I can add tags, which is really easy to do so. I can move it, repeat it, even duplicate it. And that's all very easy to do so. So I can start going adding tasks. Now, one of the things you can do, for example, if you wanted to turn this into a project, you can convert it into a project, this task, and all of the relevant details will come up. For example, the deadline, the time that you want to get started on the project, and it will all appear inside the project. So in this case, I'm going to go and delete the project. But as you can see, you can get started with a project here. Now, one of the things you can see down here is you've got two different areas. You've got a heading. So for example, here you can say uh, research, could be the, the, the header that you wanted to add. Um, you can archive the header, move the header, and even remove it, and you can start adding some tasks below it. So in this case, I, I might want to look at seeds chosen online. Uh, I might want to uh, watch YouTube on how to sew. And I can just add all of the relevant stuff here and weave these actually into my daily routine. So for example, I'm gonna add this into today. I'm gonna to go ahead and add this one into uh, Wednesday. And as you can see, this sort of starts to populate this area and you can add as many headers and as many tasks as you like and all of the relevant stuff will pop up and it will actually section it out into the relevant projects that you're working on. Now, the good thing is if I wanna create an area, for example, I could call it um, garden because maybe I've got multiple projects in the garden. I can add tags only to this area, but the area is really for managing your project. So for example, if I wanted to add this project to the garden, you can see that appears there. And if I wanted to go ahead and add another project, maybe I want to call it patio resurfacing. 
I'm making the most of this garden project, I can go ahead and uh, add a deadline to it. Maybe I want to add a deadline of the 31st next year. So I can get an indication of how many days I've got left and I can go into this gardens area and actually see all of the projects that I've got active and how many active tasks I've got inside of there. So this is a really useful setup. A lot of people like to have the areas and the projects and it, I tell you, it does look really attractive um, in terms of being able to uh, view it and see it every single day. Going back to this area here, this is the preferences. I wanted to talk through this before we wrap up. So you can see here that you've got a general area. So any task that is completed will automatically move to the logbook. You can set that up as a daily one or a manually push to the logbook. Although a lot of people have the immediately one set up so that they can go into the logbook and see all that they've done so far. Now go back into the preferences, you can set the badge count as today or what you've got in your inbox or only the deadlines available, which makes it handy. And you can have this as well. So for example, if you wanted to group to do's based on project and area, you can have that. But if not, you can just have it in this sort of list view where they don't sort of group it. But this is what grouping looks like. This is what grouping doesn't look like. You're allowed to, you can have the uh, today widget to appear uh, things have things three launch inside of it when needed. You can preserve the window width when resizing the sidebar and also enable your things three URLs. Now this is part of the URL scheme. Uh, this is a bit more in detail. So for example, you wanted to create um, the actual, you want to have links to your to-dos and view lists. It's a lot more complicated than many people think. So I don't think I want to introduce this today. You can see that you've got something called Things th Things Cloud, and this is essentially a, a syncing service. And I've actually personally found the sync to be really powerful on Things Cloud. Um, in the past, I've I've not had a single problem with it. You can also have a your mail, Apple Mail, to Things Three, so you can actually manage your own dedicated email address. So you don't necessarily have to have um, a, a Apple Mail. You can email in to any of the emails uh, services. So that's really handy. So Things Cloud is essentially your, your management system for backing up everything. And this is really useful because it allows it to sync on iPhone and iPad as well at the same time. So quick entry is something that I do want to mention to you. So I've got to set up as Control P or Command P. And as you can see, this is the quick entry and I can go ahead and quickly save a task. I can add the to-do, the notes, uh, the when, the tags, the checklist, and all that there. And I can even add it to the right project as well. So you can actually change that if you want. So if you want it as Command F or something else, then just make sure you know which ones have already been preset. So you don't like open Command P and it's already connected with another application. And you can also set the default, whether it goes straight to today or the inbox. Now I've showed you the calendar events, but you can also connect it with Apple Reminders so that any of the to-dos from your so for example, any of the to-dos from uh, your house. So for example, uh, you set a reminder on iCloud from in the house project that you've got goes into inbox so that you can really sync together some of your tasks. So for example, you see five appears. So it could be organize um, the mortgage meeting, pick up milk and call back. So it actually brings in from your reminders, which is really easy and you can press this import all button. So guys, that's really all of things. I'm gonna just touch on one final thing, which I completely forgot, is the quick find. This works really well on iOS. I particularly like the iOS application because of the gestures. But for example, if I wanted to find the Notion planning, I can click in and find it really easily. So that is just a way to quick find anything from tags, lists, and uh, finding to-dos. And that's handy if you're like switching between these projects quite fast. Um, I will be doing a video soon with Tiago Forte, who's going to dive into his Things3 account. So please do stay tuned for that. This is not a working Things3 account. I wanted to showcase some of the basic features of the application. Anyway, guys, this is really suitable for those looking for a minimal, really reliable, and also attractive to do this application that only uses it in a personal situation and that doesn't need to rely on sharing uh, actual task abilities. Uh, and, and really doesn't have a too complicated setup because this experience is really designed for small amounts of uh, tasks in it. In my opinion, like it looks better with less tasks in it 
and uh, it won't necessarily be able to you know be a behemoth of an application uh, in terms of Todoist say uh, being able to store hideous amounts of tasks but I definitely recommend it it does follow GTD and it's something that a lot of people find really attractive really reliable and fast so guys please do let me know in the comments whether you have any questions about it and I look forward to seeing you in a future video thank you everyone cheers